A very warm welcome to former England QPR Southampton Spurs Liverpool defender Stephen Corker. Hi, Stephen. Oh, How a, are you? Got a long list of clubs. Well, there's more. I was going to say Malaga City player manager as well, but then I could put in uh, Wigan, Fenerbahce, Dundee. I mean, the list goes on and on. I've had a lot of clubs. You have. How are you, first? It's lovely to see you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. I'm Can, all good. How, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? There's a reason I'm asking. How old are you? 32. 32. Okay. At what age can't a grown man wear the jeans you're wearing? <laughs> <laughs> you're getting on me already. No, no. Because I, I looked at them and I thought, they're they're proper ripped, right? All over the yeah. And I, I thought, I'd love to be able to wear them. But I thought, I can't wear them. I'm like 28. I can't wear them, right? Yeah. What age is the cutoff point for them? Oh, do you know what? You're putting me on the spot. I'm probably going to say... 34, 35. Okay, you got a couple I'm going to get in. a couple more years in there. They I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I nearly put on ripped jeans the other day. And but they've, got, they've got a little bit of collar in them. Like yeah. The knees were ripped and I'd put them on and went, nah, I'm 40. No. <laughs> no. He looks older than 40, doesn't he? Don't you dare try it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. We've got loads to talk to you about. Let's start off talking about where you are now. So you're the player manager of Malaga City, right? Yep. But you're currently here in London. Currently here in London, thanks to, to Brexit, we've got a few issues with my visa. So I came back on Sunday. Uh, I've been in the, been at the embassy trying to get my visa sorted. I went to coach remotely. So wow. it's, a, it's a completely new challenge. Uh, one Have you missed expecting. a game yet? No, but I will miss this weekend. So, how, so what are you doing with regards to like team talks? Is that on Zoom? Yeah, on Zoom. Uh, I still got work on my Spanish anyway. So a lot of it can be translated through the assistant. And uh, we'll be streaming the game to be able to obviously wow. get, get the headphones in for one of the assistants and be talking. Talking, talking from what I could see from the video, you know, it's not it's not the same level as it is here, where you got the six seven cameras around the around the stadium. So it's going to be tough. It's it's another challenge that I'm facing um, as a manager. I've been been hit with a lot of challenges in the first seven yeah. weeks. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I've got a lot more respect, Benny, for managers nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I spent 15 years moaning about them, <laughs> and now I'm like, do you know what? It's it's a tough gig. Is it something you've always wanted to do? Because I've never heard you speak about being a manager before until you were put in the scenario, but is it something that you've always gone, do you know what, at the end, I want to I wanna become a manager? It was, no, it wasn't. You know, for, for large periods of my career, I didn't want to play football. You know, I never mind of course, coach yeah. football, never mind being involved in punditry. I wanted to be away from it, you know. Um, and then around 27, I started to feel a bit of love for it again. I mm. went to Turkey and... It's just, yeah, I just felt so much better in myself and then in, in turn found love again for football. And then over the last couple of years, I wanted to be a manager and uh, been working towards it. Didn't know what stage or what age it was going to come. This opportunity came around and I thought, why not? Do you know, what, do you know what, Andy? Great voice. Do you know what I was just thinking? <laughs> Great voice. You have got a wonderful voice. If you get a little bit closer, if you get, seriously, if you get a little bit closer to the mic, it'll sound even better. All right. All right. I'll take on board your advice. Oh my God. <laughs> You can easily sell milk, milk tray for you, and you'll be amazing at that. Um, where are you in the league at the moment? How are things going? Do you still play yourself? Yeah, I've, you been, do. I've been playing, yeah. So it took a little while to... Yeah, to go, I've been playing, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm as close as I can be now. <laughs> I've been playing all my life. <laughs> Um, but no, I am, I am playing. I had to wait the first few games to get my license through. I've been playing, um, helping us move away from the relegation zone. We're, we're doing okay at the moment. Um, got two wins out of the last three games, so things are okay. starting to pick up. Um, what, what kind of level is it? Compare it to what we're used to over here. So it's fifth division, so it's equivalent to the National League in terms of status. Um, in terms of standard, it's probably a little bit lower. I'd say it's the sixth or seventh division. Right. Um, technically, they're good, really good, but um, physically, it's a lot slower paced. Okay, those are the, that's the big difference. So that means you've got more time on the ball then, or...? More time on the ball, it's great for me, yeah. So at the back, I'm, I'm out there smoking cigars at the moment. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, no, it's good. I mean, it has its, has its challenges when you're coming up against the technical wingers, uh, technical strikers running at you. It's, it's, it's still difficult. You've got to be concentrating. And as player manager, I find that sometimes I'm focusing on what my right winger's doing, telling him to, to, to pull in, mm. and my, my striker's running off me. So it's like trying to, trying to manage both. You know, it's, it's, it's a new role. Uh, definitely one that I find challenging, but, but I'm loving it. Honestly, it, loving it. If you're a player manager, who makes the decisions in terms of substitutions and that because no disrespect every player's had a bad game yeah. but if you're having a bad game who's <laughs> going to drag you off you're the manager I know I know I'd have to take myself off to be honest with you like I've I've had the um, so we speak before the game about look these are the ideas in terms of what we're thinking sub wise yeah. and then at half time we have another chat and then it's over to the assistants if they feel something in the moment do it you know so I trust the team around me we've got a really good team really good staff And uh, I don't think I'd want anyone dragging me if, if I'm the manager I don't want to be dragged for nothing 
I mean, I, I couldn't handle that. Imagine my <laughs> ego. Ghost, I'll be like, you're sacked. <laughs> Off you go. In any language, I'd say. What is your Spanish like? You touched on it ever so briefly that you're learning it. Yeah. Do you know, apart from asking for the checks, can you, and maybe two more beers, can you? I could speak a little bit, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I could Do you want to prove that? In that voice as well, Bentley. Yeah. Go on, speak uh, a little bit of Spanish for us. What do you want me to say? Just, just go close to the microphone. Just go, hello, how just, are you? Uh, hola, como estas? Can we just say more? Yeah. yeah, if you've got yeah. more. Hola, como estas? Que tal? Soy Steven. Como se llamas? Jesus. Yeah? I like that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what he said, but I like it. Ben so, I'm English, saying the most so. basic. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know two Spanish sentences. It's very bizarre. I don't you know say why. the same two sentences all the time. I know. They're built here. I don't know why. I know Kios Bonitos, which is what beautiful eyes you've got, and Boya Matate, which is I'm going to kill you. I don't know why I know those two. <laughs> <laughs> where, going to say, where do you know those? I don't know. I don't. I hope they're not connected. Oh. Um, listen, we've got so much to talk about. We've got you till six o'clock, right? Yeah. And a bit later on, we'll talk about, because you've had some dark moments. So we'll talk about them in just a moment. But I, I want to talk to you more about you as a player, because you start your career off at Spurs. Is that how you know Benty? Yeah, I was a youngster at the time when you was mm. obviously playing the first team. He's boy, you big, you big transfer then, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't make his head in. Yeah, it's, it's the truth. It's, because it's I'll be, news. I'll be honest. When we were talking earlier on in our meeting, and we and we knew you were coming in, we were talking about it. Ben, he actually said to me, "Oh, what a player he was! Unbelievable player." Do you feel? And this is maybe a little bit silly saying this because I personally feel as a football fan, for you guys to get to the very, very top, you're talking about less than one percent of of football players that you play at the level you do. You play for England as well. But with the talent you got, and when I hear someone like Darren Bent say, oh, what a player. Do you feel as though you achieved as much as perhaps you should have done with your talent or not? No, nowhere near. Um, and thank you for those kind words. You know, you mm. said them to me a couple of months ago. Yeah, and, and, Swansea. Yeah, and I, I reflected on it actually after we, we spoke and I was like, um, it's, it's nice to hear that, but it's also sad to hear that, you know, because my career was plagued with off the field issues and I never... I never even got close to filling my potential, you know, and that's something that definitely keeps me up at night from time to time. Um, especially when I look and I see a lot of lot of players I played with who are, you know, winning Champions Leagues and playing Premier League week in, week out. But it's also part of my story, you know. So now I'm on a, a new journey as a manager and I want to use those experiences I had, the good and the bad experiences, to to become the best the best manager I can possibly be. Um, we don't know where that's going to end up. You know, I'm in the fifth division of Spain right now. It's very early doors, but uh, I definitely want to use those experiences to to help me. When um, so just, I'm just curious, going back to Spain, what sort of crowns do you get? I'm curious. Uh, we only get about four hundred. Oh, okay. We play away from home. It's it's a couple of thousand. All right. Okay. Mm. And do you want you want to go? You want to stay in management? You have got a taste for it now, have you? Yeah, absolutely. I'd and love to and you management. didn't have that feeling when you were a player. No, as I said, honestly, for periods, I've, I hated football for long periods of time. I really hated it. Uh, I just wanted to be away from it as far as possible. But as I said, he grew, grew older, mm. got uh, matured a little bit, a little bit more wiser, and um, see the game differently today. Steve, what, what part of it of your journey did you start to fall out of love with football? Because as I said, I said to Andy Earl, I said it to you, when you was at Swansea, I played against you, I remember thinking, wow, this kid is... It was you and Ashley Williams. Yeah. I remember yeah. thinking, who is this kid? Wow. What period then after that did you start to... like? not love football anymore? I'd say it was around the period where I um, got relegated at Cardiff yeah. and I went to QPR and that was the period for me where the wheels really started to fall so off. About, about you know? 2014? Yeah, around 2014, yeah. Um, came back to QPR, um, had a terrible season, didn't perform. I don't think many of us performed that season in all honesty and we were just, we were getting so much flack from all the fans, the media pressure started. Um, I was arrested on a couple of occasions for like drunk misdemeanours and, that's where it all just started to like really hit me, you know. Uh, I'd been gambling for some time. I'd already been to rehab for gambling at 19, but wow. it wasn't really until 22, 23 where it really started to like, wow, okay, this is this is an issue. I can't stop. You know, I put down the gambling, I pick up the drink, put down the drink, pick back up the gambling, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got women involved and now you've got food involved and that it's like, you know, just something to fill the hole inside me, fill the void. Um, and it took me many years to get out of that, to be honest with you. We'll talk about it in more detail when we come back from the break, if that's okay. But you were talking about your experiences, and of course others can learn from your experiences. Are uh, you with Liverpool's youth team, or is that right? Is yeah, that recently, yeah. or last season, when was that? Yeah, so they did a lot of, uh, lot of work with Behind the White Lines, a company I launched okay. to support players in academies, players who were released from academies. Um, was working with a few of the boys who are now playing in the, in the winners, first then. team. Winners, yeah, league, yeah, cup winners. league Cup winners. Um, Amazing, amazing to work with a few of those and to work through it because everyone's individual, right? So all, all the different players have, have, you know, different mindsets, different beliefs. Um, one that sticks out to me is Jaden Dans. Um, was was brilliant. Honestly, we sat with him for, for half an hour and uh, afterwards the, the club were like, well, what, what do you think about him? 
I said, you're joking, aren't you? He's taught me more in half an hour than I've taught him. You wow. know, he just had that that mentality that was just so driven. You mentioned that you got into into drink, into gambling, and it got to such a... Uh, how bad did it get for you? you? Were you thinking about taking your life? Did it? Was it really that bad? Yeah, it definitely got to that stage for sure. Um, it's something I have to work on today. You know, people seem to think that, you know, you overcome gambling, overcome drink, and that's it. It's gone. It's, it's something that I have to work on daily. You know, it's a daily reprieve. Um, Can I ask, they're, they're all addictions... All right. addictions. For, are, they, are they are they are they linked in any way? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that, for, for me, the root cause is is me wanting to escape myself. You know, that's that's ultimately what I do, and I self sabotage, and you know, I've self sabotaged throughout my career and, and ruined a lot of good opportunities through it. So, uh, addiction is like a friend I don't want. You know, it's always there, it's always waiting for me, um, and and that's why that's why I mentioned you know being a daily reprieve is something that I have to work on daily. Um, Even I, now. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I've relapsed many times in my life and I, I don't want to go there again. You know, each time it gets darker and darker and harder to pull myself out of it. Yeah. So um, it's, yeah, it's, it's part of, part of uh, daily disciplines. Did you have people helping you? Because I'm, I'm guessing, obviously, when you were going through these dark days, you felt on your own. But was there one person or, or some people that said, you know what, enough's enough, you need help, and they really helped you? Yeah, definitely. Like, I've got a few friends that, that I've put on that list and also my family, you know, they were so supportive of me. Um, people always ask about the support inside football. Look, I wouldn't sit here and point fingers. I feel like in football, the managers I've worked under help to the best of their ability, right? Mm. They don't know how to deal with addiction or depression unless they're living with it themselves, you know? They don't do the training on it. It's something that I actually think we should introduce, yeah. right? But um, I never sit here and go, oh, football turned its... No, it, it, it turned its back on me when the time was right. But um, people were trying to help. They just didn't have the knowledge and, and know-how. Do you think that, that's... Sorry, Andy. Do you think that's definitely something that football clubs need to be better at? Because... I get it. They've got a lot. The manager's got a lot to do with. I understand that, but do you think they should employ other people? Certainly in this specialist field, because we've seen it a lot. We had Aaron Lennon sitting in that very chair, and he had a similar story to you. And I would have never guessed that I played with Azar. So do you think football clubs could do more in that sense, in terms of getting someone in who is an expert? Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. I mean, I, I'm actually working on courses at the moment with, my, with Sue Paris, who you know well, yeah. um, on emotional intelligence. I think it's something that we could definitely you can either help the coaches with it. Maybe it could be part of the the badges, or it could be something that, uh, like you said, outside support comes in and does. Because um, the moment the issue is trust, Benny, you know what it's like. So who yeah. would you who would you have told as a player that you're struggling? When when in, in all honesty, in my experience, if I when I tell the manager I'm struggling, I'm at the team. You know, yeah, of course. So like, and that doesn't help me. So it was kind of like um, who to trust. And I feel like football's definitely making improvements and making strive towards being better. But they've still got a long way to go. Of you, you and I were chatting in the break, and I won't name names, but I said to you, do you should still speak to some of your old, you know, um, teammates, and you, yeah, and rattled them off. And then quite a few of the names are players that also struggled and have struggled. Is it is the is the problem a lot more common in football than we are led to believe? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, the, it's a real problem in society today. You mm. know, and football is no different. We're human beings. And um, yes, at, at the highest level, we, you know, we're paid a lot of money, but the money doesn't cover, over, well, it might cover over the cracks for, for a period of time, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take away the pain and the, the fear and the anxiety that, that mm. people could be feeling. So um, there's a lot of players that haven't come out publicly that I know personally who are, who are struggling. You know, there are, there are a lot of issues out there. And like I said, it's, a, it's something that's in society and something that I feel we can collectively uh, get better at. Do you think that people don't take it seriously enough when they're talking about footballers because of the money? So, like, rather than thinking, well, they'll be fine. The, the line you always hear is, oh, they'll be fine, they're earning 50 grand a week. Do you think that's why some people don't take it seriously, especially in, in when it comes to footballers? Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, for those who know about gambling, I was earning 60 grand a week and doing 61 grand a week, you know? So it's like, it didn't matter what, nah, number, you, it didn't matter yeah. what number you gave me, I'd always do more than I could afford, you know? Um, and those who suffer with gambling always do that. And if it's drink or it's drugs or whatever it is, you know, we do more than than, than the norm, you know? Mm. It's, it becomes something more than social. And uh, it's an issue, a huge issue. Uh, I've only got you for about another three minutes. Um, so I want to talk about, there's so much I want to talk to you about, but just quickly before we move on, um, there'll be people listening to this that, that can identify with what we're saying. If you were to give them one message of, of advice and maybe a, a message of strength, what would it be? What would you say to those people? For me, it'd be to, to firstly look in the mirror. Um, accountability is the most important thing, you know. Uh, we're oft, it's too easy to look outside and, and blame other people and blame other things. For me, accountability, you know, look look in the mirror and look at what you are doing. You know, I had to look at what I was doing. That was when only when the real change was made. And, um, you know, it's easy to say, talk to someone. Um, don't just talk to anybody, you know. It's got to be someone that obviously you can, you can trust. And there's so many support groups out there, you mm -hmm. know. I, I swear by AA, I swear by GA, you know, I would go to a meeting after this and, and, and go and get my, my daily top up and get my support Good. with like-minded individuals. So that would be my advice for, for anyone else okay. out there struggling. Um, let's talk to you about Liverpool, right? 
You played up front for Liverpool under Jurgen Klopp. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Did he know you were a defender? I, I, I'm not sure he actually knew me when I signed because okay. I mean honestly do you know so what you were one of his first signings right at Liverpool I was one of his first, but well, whether, whether I was his signing or right, whether okay. the club signing I'm not sure but um, it's actually really interesting right because tonight they're playing Southampton now I played for Southampton against Liverpool I had officially the worst game of my career we lost 6-0 and two months later I signed for Liverpool so I don't know how that happened. I still don't know to this day, but it happened. And two days later, I was coming on up front against Arsenal at Anfield. Uh, we got a late <laughs> equaliser and it was just... Because of you? Not because of me, but, you know, whatever. I played my part, you know, I was on yeah. the pitch. And so, <laughs> I, um, um, But just amazing, amazing experience. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. So, so when you were training with him, right? Yeah. Where were you training? Centre half? I was training at centre half. I was training at centre half. And when so. he turned around, I mean, you must have said something to you. Are you going up front? Or? Yeah, so he, t he told me after the game, he said, like, and I actually remember it because it's something that actually rings yeah, true today. You know, it's like that. Um, everyone thinks you're crazy until it pays off, you know? And it's like, <laughs> That's nice. it's, it is nice, isn't it? Because yeah, it's like so that. true, you know? Like, he, he's a risk taker, you know? He's taken a lot of risks. You know, you've got to look at the cup final. He put youngsters on when a lot of managers would be scared to do so. And he mm. did it. He did it with confidence, you know? He um, he believes in you and you feel that belief. So um, running on as a striker That's amazing. felt good. Do you, do you ever have any contact with Jürgen anymore? I mean, when's the last time you spoke to him? No, I haven't had any contact with him since I left the club. Um, I was someone I'd obviously like to learn from now as a manager. Of course. So, have, you got, have you got his number in your phone? I haven't. No, oh, okay. I haven't. If I, knew, I knew what's coming next. If, it, if, <laughs> he's, <laughs> if he's listening to this, he better text me. Do you know what I mean? so I'd love, to, I'd love to, to to reach out to him and have another conversation because I said that was that was a period where I wasn't actually in a good place, you know. And I'd love to to reflect with a lot. Of, like most managers, I've called, I've made amends to, I've spoken to them. He's someone that you know, he's he's up there, isn't he? He's someone difficult of to course, get to get yeah. in touch with. But um, but yeah. Great experience. Great. And you, oh, we haven't got time. You played for um, Team GB in the Olympics. Yeah, Olympics as well. As well yeah, yeah. That was with Giggsy, right? That was with Giggsy. Stuart Pearce was the, the gaffer. I think we had, we had Bellamy in the squad as well. Yeah. Um, Good times. Unbelievable experience. One experience. You yeah, met LeBron James and a couple of other who were obviously big hitters. So, uh, so if you win that, right? If you win that, so how do we get on in that tournament? Do you how do we get on? Yeah, we got knocked out to South Korea on penalties. In what stage? It was the one before. I might have been a quarter. Right. If, if we win that. Yeah. Do you have an Olympic gold medal? Would have had a medal, yeah. Of course. Yeah. No, I'm just thinking, right? How nuts is that? Yeah. Like you, can, you, can, you say Bowles got one, you'd have had one. Yeah. Would have it's... had a gold. Would, I mean, yes, we got, it was def, it was a cause. It was a cause we got knocked out on, right? So if we'd have got to the semis, we could have been up for a bronze. Wow. You know? So, um. Yeah. I'd love one of That's those. amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. so bizarre. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. That's so bizarre. Um, thank you so much for coming in. A real pleasure. Um, we hope you're not in the country next week. Right, I know that sounds bizarre. <laughs> we want you to go back and carry on managing Malaga City. Yeah. Well, can I tell you what? Can we speak to you on the phone next week when you're over there and just check in with you and see how, how the season's going? How many games you got left? Let's do it. We've got 10 games left. All right, we, how great would that be? Yeah. From now to the end of the season, maybe every week we check in, see how the team's getting on. Sounds good. Is that all right? We'll sounds try and get good. Jürgen to contact you as well. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. Please do, do yeah. And we'll have the whole conversation in Spanish. All right, All right. you're ready for that, yeah? <laughs> well, I'll just tell you what beautiful eyes you got. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you'll say to me, yes, I have. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in, a real pleasure. Nice one, Steve. Yeah, Thank uh, you. Uh, last Thank hour you. of drive time with me, Andy Gossi. Darren Ben coming up live right after this on TalkSport. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.